All right, everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of another bourbon show. Uh, tonight we're going to be drinking uh, a very uh, a drink from a very small d- distiller. Uh, tonight we're going to be drinking some spirits of French Lick, the Weeder. Um, I mean, before we get started doing anything else, Stephen, what do you think of that? I mean, this is a bottle that reminds me of me. Not this time, not because it's tall and skinny, but just because uh, you know it's just kind of unremarkable in every possible way. In every possible way, it's yeah. To me, um, I think this is a cool distiller. Um, I have not had anything from them just yet, but I think the label really undersells it. This is, I feel like I would look over this every time. Um, Okay. It's a very plain label to me. There's not a lot going on. I know there's some fine details to it, um, but ultimately I just think it's a very forgettable label overall. Um, I do like how it says the weeder. I kind of like the font there. And like mm-hmm. the you know big bold background to it but overall it's just like it kind of looks like a carpet or something you know in a, okay. in a hotel lobby or something i'm gonna sure. end up giving this one a four out of ten okay. i just don't like it very much again it needs some more flair to it. it doesn't have a lot of flair but as long as the juice inside is good then we're all straight but not a great label not a great start now, what do you do you think anything about the fact that they kind of did a florida lee with the grain I think that is kind of cool. I almost wish that was bigger or something. I, I, okay. I, I do like the symbol overall. I could yeah. see it being having much cooler applications, like if it was etched onto the glass and okay. then they did a cooler design around it or something. I just feel like it, it's underselling. I feel like they're not really putting their best foot forward, kind of like our buddy Ryan tonight. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking guido as hell, by the way. I got the brush next to me. <laughs> you need a pick, I think. I think that's what you need. Oh, I have one downstairs. I left it down there, though. Ah, oh, shit. I, I should have brought it. You left it. your pick downstairs? You knew we were having the podcast, man. Bring I, I, the know. Pick. <laughs> I know. I <laughs> know. You, you got to keep it close. <laughs> I don't have the chain. I, I need a gold chain. You do. You definitely need a gold chain. I, I'm, I worry that, like, if it's the wrong type of link, that it'll get caught in your spaghetti there. And, uh, be painful coming out that's one thing i would oh boy that's sexy oh yeah the girls like that. for the listeners for the listeners you need to watch this youtube episode that's what you need to do you need to uh you get to see a little bit of ryan's chest hair that's that's his spaghetti <laughs> where he's showing <laughs> an so, awesome hey, track suit an awesome track suit awesome shout fila out. italia shout out to our sponsor fila <laughs> shoes here we love you fila and it looks great because this is the pinnacle vodka flavored vodka episode that we're doing tonight. So it's a great day. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of information about Spears French Le- French Lick, the weeder. Uh, so it's a blend of two year old and seven year old weeded bourbons. Um, the two year old is distilled right there at French Lick, uh, Indiana. Um, the seven year they acquire from somewhere. I don't remember from where, uh, but the mash bill on, uh, the French lick stuff is 70% corn, 20% wheat, 10% caramel malt. The seven year old is a 68% corn, 20% wheat, 12% malted barley. Um, so very, very similar mash bills there. Uh, and supposedly 60% of the bottle is their own distillate. The other 40% is, uh, what they source in um spirits of french lake is a very cool company um they make four different bourbons one is a maddie gladden bottled in bond which is a straight bourbon uh they make a lee sinclair four grain uh so that's a four grain is got uh, predominantly corn but then rye wheat and barley uh and then so then they have their wheat their lee sinclair four grain and a Lee Sinclair four grain bottled in bond. Um, so those two uh, are, the, excuse me, all three of those are, I think they're 100% their own distillate. Um, but Spirits of French Lick also makes brandy. They make rum, they make gin, they make absinthe, they make vodka, um, very full portfolio of, of liquors. And I will say that their master distiller is a guy by the name of Alan Bishop. 
um, he is a very, very, very cool guy. Like, um, if we had him on the show, I guarantee he would say fuck more than the three of us combined. Um, I forget the name of their lead marketing person, um, but she is awesome too, right? So, um, uh, Alan, he actually follows our show. Um, don't know if he's going to listen to this one, but that's not going to jeopardize our rankings. Our rating will be solely based on what we're drinking. Uh, not the fact that he's one of our four followers. So, um, so Steven, you gave this a 4.0. Yes, that's correct. You know, we gotta, I, I want to go back and do some looking. It seems like you always give either a four or like a six. And I don't see anything except outside of that, except for a nine for Weller. Yeah. We've had some other variants in there too. I think, uh, I gave Blanton's a three, maybe a two or three. I gave Blanton's a pretty rough score. Okay. Um, I think honestly, most stuff is either slightly below average or slightly above in the label category, honestly. So they're probably, you know, there's going to be an arc where it's like a lot of stuff is like fives, but could be argued that's a four or six or somewhere around there. Yeah. So I think, I think it's a fair system. And every once in a while you have outliers that are like really bad. I believe I gave Jesse James and several of the other whiskeys we had that night, like a one. For yeah. Instance. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it All varies. Right. All right. I'm just saying that you give fours as much as Ryan picks up on caramel. That's all I'm saying. Hey, I think I think the stats would show slightly differently. I think Ryan is trash. Okay, I think I think I'm passive. I think I'm passive. Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm great. <laughs> Ryan, he just called you trash. By the way, I know. I know. <laughs> and you don't care. I'm I'm the one in the track suit. So who's, who's really trash here? You know, that is true. I stand corrected. <laughs> Well, what do you say? We want to drink some of the weeder. That's, I mean, the nose is really interesting, so I'm very interested in tasting. It's it. an interesting, it's an interesting pour. That's for sure. It smells like sourdough or something like that on the nose to me. Oh yeah, give it a sip. Cheers, oh my god, it's all sourdough. I get some apple. On the nose uh-huh. and tasting it. Yeah. It is like that sourdoughy. It, now that Steven said that, that's all I can think about. Yep. I get dough. I get like, um, I do get apple. I get, I get fudge. Like, I, I get this weird fudge taste in my mouth. Oh, by the way, um, so Ryan and Steven both got theirs, their pours from me this time. And I bought mine at a place uh, pretty popular in the St. Louis area called the Wine and Cheese Place. Um, I don't know that French, Spirits of French Lick is even available in Illinois yet. Um, it wasn't whenever I bought this bottle, um, but it is available a few, a few places uh, in Missouri and the Wine and Cheese Place is where I got it. I think I got it right at SRP, which is 50 bucks. Um, so yeah, so earlier when you guys were talking about the nose and it was an interesting nose, I was like, it's an interesting bourbon. It's it's an unusual bourbon, especially for a weeded bourbon. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I it's, I, and now that you said fudge, I definitely pick up on that as well. It's really interesting how it, the nose pretty much is what the initial taste is to me, but then it really gives way to a lot of other stuff. It really opens up towards the end. Yep. Um, the aftertaste that I'm getting is just regular bourbon notes that are really nice. The finish mm-hmm. is very nice. I think that I would not like this if it was sourdough throughout and sour, mm-hmm. even though that's a pleasant taste too, that's just not what I would want in the entire experience, but it's a good finish as well. Yeah. And I get some like weird baking spices in there. Um, it's just a really, really complex, um, complex bourbon. It, it's, um, it's 90 proof. So it's not like a heavy hitter when it comes to proof, but, uh, I mean, it's not a lightweight either. It's not a, you know, Jack Daniels 80 proof, but, um, do they make other whiskeys or is this, yeah, I already, I already talked about it. <laughs> no, yeah, I dumb mean, son of a bitch. Well, I heard all the yeah, other. You were, I, mean, you were, they... I believe you were quaffing at the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I heard, 
I heard you say, I mean, how many other whiskeys are in their portfolio? I mean, if they're making everything. They make three different whiskeys. Okay. Uh, technically, I guess you would say two different whiskeys. Um, so they've got, well, so they, they sell a white dog. They sell a, a, a white unfinished, you know, just a whiskey. Uh, and then they got the weeder. Then they've got their Maddie Gladden, which is uh, their bo- uh, bottled and bond straight whiskey. Uh, and then they've got their Lee Sinclair, which is a four grain. Um, and then that four grain comes in either standard four grain or bottled and bond. So that's it's the same thing, just aged longer. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys uh, buy any white dog for uh by the way? Like do you do you ever buy any white dog? It seems I, like I never becoming, have. It seems like it's becoming more common for distilleries to release it. Am I wrong about that? No, I, I think you are. I think you are correct about that. Um, I've never per- personally purchased any. I know plenty of people who do because they've got their own small little aging barrels. Um, so they, you know, they'll. That makes uh, sense. Yeah. yeah so it seemed a little more popular like three years ago, three, four oh, years it? ago. That That's what it seemed. I mean, in my store accounts, at least I, I saw it more frequently. Mm-hmm. Unless that fad's just over. I know it's still around, but I yeah. hardly ever see it now. Yeah, like I think I think well, Koval like had one up here. Um, Koval Distillery, it's out of Chicago mm-hmm. or Evanston, mm-hmm. right up there. Um, I can't remember if Breckenridge had one. I might be going crazy, or it's a know. bottle that that looked just like Breckenridge, but okay. I never really heard good things about it, so I just never purchased one. Yeah, like the only people that I know are 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 people who have their own little aging barrels, and they'll they'll barrel a, a rum, and then they'll follow that up with white dog and then they'll follow that up with a wine and yeah. So, um, but I, yeah, I've, I've never, <clears throat> never bought any. It, it would be weird to drink. It, it, I feel like I would just psych myself out thinking it's vodka or tequila or, mm. or something or rum. Yeah. You know, what the hell is this? I'm glad that fad's <laughs> over. Cause I wasn't, I'm like, are they just too cheap to, go the whole way here you know <laughs> or they need to push product out faster I mean, to get over their bottom line if you're a distiller and you know you don't have any white dog that you release and then you're seeing other people buying you're like we could just stop we could just stop here you might as well release mm-hmm. it it's like as long as you have the distribution to do so just get it out there if people are buying yeah save space no, that's a fair point i was really excited whenever I got to a store and I saw this and I was like, oh man, I finally get to give this stuff a try. Cause I had heard about it and just never got a, never, never tried it. So I finally bought the bottle and never forget. I got home that night, was excited. I opened it up, I poured it in a glass and I took my first sip and I was like, oh, this stuff is shit. I can't stand it. Now here's the thing. It was not the fact that it's bad because it's not bad. It's I now I like it and I like it a lot. Here's the thing I had in my mind that it was going to taste a particular way because it's weeded and I tried it and it tasted nothing like I expected that it was going to taste. And therefore, I thought I didn't like it. But the truth is, is that I had it in my head what it was going to taste like. And I happened to be wrong. And once I like sat down and said, okay, let's let's drink this and see what this is. I was like, Oh, okay, this is actually really good. It's just not anything like what I expected it to be. And once I like calmed myself and like allowed myself the ability to experience what was in that, in that uh, bottle, then I learned to appreciate it. And now I actually like it a lot. But that's just my two cents. I was expecting the same thing, Dan, but I definitely don't hate it. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't have that, you know, you know, notion that I, Oh, it doesn't taste like a Weller or a Maker's 46. Mm-hmm. This must be shit. You know, I was expecting it to go that way, but it's really complex. It's interesting. It, it is. It's really complex. It's, um, um, it's interesting. It's, it's very different, right? As far as like uniqueness goes, it's a very unique pour. Uh, I've never had it with ice. I've never had it with a splash of water. I've never mixed anything with it. I've only ever drank it neat. 
and part of that is because like once I tried it and got it out of my head what I thought it should taste like, I've really enjoyed it neat. So I haven't had a reason to try it any of those other ways. But I, what proof is this? 90 something? 90. 90? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would really be curious to like have this at a higher proof mm -hmm. um, just to see how that would change everything. Because to me, it's like the, the one thing I'll say is that it goes away a little quick. It's, it's yeah. so smooth yeah. that, that everything goes away pretty quickly. And if it lingered a little more, it seems like the longer the taste stays in my mouth, the more flavors I pick up with it. Mm -hmm. So it'd be interesting to have a higher alcohol to content in it and, um, and just see what else came out of it. Because it, it seems like it takes you on a whole journey from the time it hits your lips to, you know, the time you can't feel the finish anymore. Yeah. You know, I've never seen... I don't even know if it's a possibility with spirits of French lick, but um, I've never seen anybody have a barrel pick or a store pick of any spirits of French lick product. And like, you oh, couldn't do a barrel announcing pick. that we're doing one tonight. Yeah. With <laughs> <laughs> I would absolutely love to, I would love to do a, a barrel, a, excuse me, a store pick of the weeder. The um, name of the town is actually French Lick. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. French I Lick, mean, it's Indiana. Too it's too bad it's not Italian Lick, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you look like Italian Blow tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> oh, it's not far from Louisville. Was it like an hour from Louisville, probably? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'd do something like that. Thanks for the invite. <laughs> yeah, Alan, we'll we'll be there Saturday. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> no, but, but but I think that that Stephen, the reason I bring that up is I think that that's a really good point. Is that like at a higher proof, I don't know what it would do to it. You know, like I mean, nobody. Well, Alan Bishop knows what it would taste like at a higher proof. Um, but if you did a store pick, there's a possibility that you could be like, okay. You know the combination that you want alan but we want this bottle that you know 105 yeah and i mean that i guess that it seems like that would be a possibility but i do i do agree that the finish is not very long it's um it's got a fairly short finish yeah it does yeah it does <laughs> <laughs> wait a wait a you just saved the episode ryan <laughs> hey so so this past uh well just yesterday last night was the super bowl uh ryan pretty much every single year you head to the super bowl not this year obviously with covid and um obviously. so many things so obviously right, you yeah. didn't go this year uh, and fly back into town last night or anything like that leave i mean it would be absurd if you left friday evening after work or before you were even supposed to get off work to be honest with you and then came back last night and obviously that did not happen but if you did like what would you have been doing down in tampa uh mainly drinking uh, oh, okay. is, uh the predominant one but uh yeah you know we we like to see how the ticket market goes you know where it's priced at and try to buy tickets to go to the game okay which is what we usually do every year but yeah just not this year this time a year ago you like ran into gronk at like a Super Bowl party, and then this year he's back in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Catching a touchdown. It's pretty ironic. Pass. We uh, we were down there last year, and that was the barstool party. We actually met Portnoy too, but Mark Cuban is good buddies with him, I guess. So we're all walking into that party. We had a table, and he was leaving, and he's with his assistant or I don't whoever the hell it was. A buddy of ours was like, "Hey, Mark, can we get a picture?" There were four of us. It was my brother, him. It was. Me and my brother and then two of our buddies. Mark's like, yeah, I'll, I'll do a picture, no problem. And then my brother and I kind of stay off to the side. Mark Cuban's like, you guys going to get in? We're like, no. He's like, look at these fucking stepbrothers. And then he, <laughs> they took the picture without us. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. South Beach was a lot of fun. I mean, in retrospect, it was probably a lot of COVID cases going around. But Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. What we, we really know at the time. I mean, we didn't know much. I, I remember going down there thinking, this might not be good, but I mean, 
everyone thought it was going to go away the next week. You know, there'll be old news. It's fine. No, and no, clearly and, not everybody a, thought that. And as a result, <laughs> and it, <laughs> very, very few people thought that actually <laughs> in early February, late January, we flew down there. I think it was late January last year because the, the bowl was on, I think the second or the third. So when you're talking about late January, early February, shit didn't really hit the fan till mid March. But so at that point, in but le- very I'm, I'm few not, people thought it was going to be gone quick. <laughs> not going well. I mean, people were probably like, "All right, what, like, what's the next thing to happen?" Because SARS was quick. Anything that the bird flu, everything in a media cycle, those ones were pretty quick. And this one, I mean, obviously, it's still going. And us football fans play the, uh, pay the absolute price because the NFL gave seventy five hundred tickets to healthcare workers, which was <laughs> an atrocity. The football fans everywhere. <laughs> My cousin was now. at the game. Healthcare worker? Yeah. yeah right? She's yeah. a nurse in Tampa. Yeah. Doesn't even know who Tom Brady is. Oh, she's a huge football fan. Oh, I just. How about that, that healthcare worker that streaked onto the field? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it, was it a healthcare worker? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. There, there, I, think I mean, there were like, what, 15, there were like 15,000 people there that weren't healthcare workers, right? I, yeah. I think it was like eighteen five or something. Okay, yeah, or eighteen thousand. Yeah. But either someone paid that guy to do that and hit all their bets because there was apparently a streaker option. Like someone will streak the field. You could bet yes or no on that, and lo and behold, someone streaks. So what I'm guessing is someone paid for that guy to get in. Like, all right, you got to streak. I'll pay all the. I'll pay all the fines. <laughs> you know and then we'll win a bunch of money i imagine yeah. that's probably what happened dude he got tackled hard too <laughs> yeah he started going down it was poor form he started he's trying to take a knee he got the first down oh, yeah. and he was trying to just he was just trying to play it safe well he thought that he the quarterback rules applied and once you start your slide you're off limits and yeah. sorry but that works for tom brady and patrick mahomes but but if you're like, a streaker yeah he was playing by eli manning rules it's just <laughs> <laughs> anything goes Did you? out there did you hear the Kevin Harlan call on that? On Westwood no. One, it was on the radio. You could you could probably Google it, but anytime there's a streaker, he always like, all right, he's to the thirty, the twenty, and he like commentates on all security coming at him, and he's <laughs> talking shit about his outfit. It's pretty. He's like, he's like, pull up your pants like a man, because apparently he was like wearing a thong or his shit was falling down. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah, but again, you didn't go to the Super Bowl, so next year, not. next LA, year, L. A. Is that where it's at next year? Yep, L.A., New Orleans, Phoenix, Las Vegas, I think. I might be missing a city. (laughs) So, uh, Ryan, I don't know if you're friends with him, but Joel? I don't think I I am. It was like a year ago. He was like, calm down. You're not going to get COVID. And, like, Stephen has been just (laughs) dunking on Joel about that post the entire year <laughs> i screenshot it at the time because i was like why would you make why would you do this you have to be an incredibly stupid man to do this i had covid i mean look at me you know yeah now you're wearing stupid track suits <laughs> i think Jesus, ryan i think you two might both be like from the same like your origins might be the same he's italian you're not Italian. <laughs> I'm actually 10%. I can show you the 23 million. Okay, 10%. Yeah. Yeah. So but name off is not an Italian was, name. It, it Which is like 3% Namowitz. higher than Ashkenazi Jews. So let's not get too carried away <laughs> with the percentage here. <laughs> it was Namowitz, and then it was changed uh, at Ellis Island. Okay, so you were Polish? Uh, yeah. Okay, so he's Croatian, I think. but All the same shit. Same shit, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm Just Lithuanian. That... I think I'm Romanian. It said Ukrainian, all that all that shit. All right. What yeah. the fuck is Shantofalski? That's Polish as well. It's it's technically okay. like Czechoslovakian, like in that area. Okay. Why are you just shouting the word Jewish? <laughs> I, I know the tracksuit's really seeping into your veins. We're trying to keep it together. <laughs> Jewish. Oh. So what do you what guys think? Dumb, what a couple of dumb bitches, by the way. Ask that again, <laughs> Dan. <laughs> <laughs> St- 
Steven, leave that in without any context. No context. Right. <laughs> Let's just say we're talking about women Brian used to care about at one point in his life. <laughs> I assume. Uh, hey, did you guys pour one out for Dustin? Of course. Yeah. You didn't, did you? No. No, I got you some... Motherfuckers. Uh, I got some uh, Seagram's Pineapple Vodka. <laughs> You could do that. that. Yeah, I could do that. You I know. poured out some Buffalo Trace because yeah, I'm not I a fan that. of Buffalo Trace. I'm not a fan of Buffalo Trace. It's mediocre at best. You poured out like three shots. Yeah. He deserved it, man. He was fucking Screech. He was. No, yeah. no, no, not anymore, though. And now he's done. About, I guess I guess we'll just say this is a little mini diamond update here. But how do you guys feel about all these Saved by the Bell cast stars coming out talking about like, oh, he was he was a little brother to me, basically. It's like I think it's fucked up. Yeah. And they've been ripping them for the last like, I mean, yeah. not that it wasn't deserved, but the last twenty years. Yeah, I don't I don't buy whatever Mario Lopez says anything. No, I think same. A, he's a worm. Yeah, I think I think it was more Mark Paul Gosseler like being the asshole to him. Because I, I was I was watching Mario Lopez and he's like ah oh, you know he's had his issues blah 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 he kind of took it easy on him compared to Mark Paul Gosseler you know I saw some interview of him with uh, that actor Brecken Meyer or whatever the hell his name is he was in Rat Race in two thousand one yeah I know what you're talking about uh, he's like yeah that guy was a fucking asshole and then they're like oh so you know him too Brecken he's like nah just from what he said oh Jesus <laughs> in the interview <laughs> I was like oh man fucking zach what a douche you know yeah yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and say it mark paul gosler and mario lopez are not welcome on another bourbon show no and that's no. Final. putting our foot down I, I agree with you steven like i don't care how many times they ask they are not coming on this show what about elizabeth Dustin, Berkeley? Il, il, yeah for sure okay. she's in showgirls i know <laughs> Which was a, didn't it strip tease that was a demi moore right that was demi moore yeah yeah they came out like the same time yeah but i mean showgirls is way worse yet better it, you know what i mean like did elizabeth berkeley she get naked in that one? Oh yeah oh really she has the that like she has a sex scene in that movie that has got to be the worst sex scene of any movie ever <laughs> she, she, like you guys have seen the movie right yeah it's been so long so. All right, she's like, like they're in a pool. She's got her legs wrapped around the guy, and she's like out of the water, but she like starts flopping backwards. <laughs> like, who would want to have sex in a pool? It's a nice oh. house, man. This is shot in Dustin's backyard at the time. <laughs> <laughs> The show is bare ass. Yeah. This guy's got quite the chin. He's pouring champagne on her head now. Yep. Just wait till you see how terrible <laughs> this gets. It's so <laughs> wonderful. It's amazing how bad it is. Can we look at the X videos comments on this video? <laughs> Afterwards. <laughs> Afterwards, sure. Yeah. yeah. Is that Kyle Mc, McLaughlin or whatever from Twin Peaks? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. All right, but this is where it just <laughs> gets hurt. so, so terrible. But so terrible that it's wonderful. <laughs> you know, you guys, at a certain point, we're just watching porn together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, just watch. <laughs> I don't know if it's that funny, Dan. <laughs> just wait. It It will be. Hold on. She looks like a predator her, a little bit. Look at her, her hairline. Hair. Jesus. Yeah, it's not great. Oh, right. <laughs> that part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Flopping around like a fish. She's really like, this is like, oh. <laughs> oh, my God. But, you know, peanut allergies are serious. <laughs> 
now do you understand why I wanted to make sure you guys saw that? We're just going to be commenting so. on porn videos now. It's <laughs> just going to be us going through the comments of porn. We videos. just have a segment where we where we read comments on a random X videos video. <laughs> <laughs> Porn video comments. <laughs> that was brutal. You know, I I thought pretty highly of that guy, that actor. But after that scene, Kyle McLaughlin. Yeah. I mean, what was he supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that was their okay. best take that they got. You know? yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> What did she try? What did she ad lib in those other scenes? <laughs> no, we need you to be more floppy. Be floppier. <laughs> Think overcooked noodle. That's what we want from you. Or that guy's dick would have broken. <laughs> yeah, probably. Like, yeah, I just, I remember like, when I watched that the very first time, just being like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, this is so dumb. <laughs> hey, I got a, I got a special surprise for you guys. Keep on talking. I'll be right back. Let's say nothing the entire time. <laughs> what, do you think the, what do you think the surprise is going to be, Ryan? <laughs> bottle of whiskey. It's, I bet it's going to be a bottle of whiskey that, that Dan is going to put up behind us and taunt us with every episode. I won no. this one. I actually got a friend in Puerto Rico. who uh, They do lotteries down there, too. This is my whiskey drinking uh, buddy. This is, is Bunny is the Hedgehog. A, oh, it's not a possum? No, dumbass. It's a hedgehog. <laughs> this That's is Bunny the Hedgehog. <laughs> so normally Bunny isn't awake yet. But he woke up early today. <clears throat> so? How yeah, old he is he? How old is he? Uh, about two and a half. How long do those things live? Three to five years. Okay. Well, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think hedgehogs are like the most underrated pets out there. They're really great. Well, what do you say we uh, give this guy a rating? Let's do it. All right. Um, who wants to go first? I'm feeling pretty confident about my rating. All right. Steven, let's hear it. 8.4. Holy wow. shit. 8.4. Yeah. I like this. Wow. Story. I think it's super interesting. I give it a yeah. lot of points just for being interesting and still good. To me, yeah, like, this is still very good to me. This is out on a limb. This is very unique. Oh, um, very. It deserves a ton of credit. Uh, I was ready to, you know, rip this based on the smell. Uh, and the bottle. Saying, Dan. And the bottle. And I didn't like the bottle. <laughs> I didn't like the label. But this one is going right up there. Is like, I'm definitely going to have to get a bottle of this at some point. I think that, yeah. Um, you know, we. I, it's so crazy to me because I was really, really prepared to not like this. Mm -hmm. And I was prefacing at the beginning of the episode, like, hey, I know this guy follows us or whatever, but I'm just not feeling the smell, not feeling the bottle, but uh, it's so unique. And to, to have a smell that weird and, and an initial taste that weird and still be something that I really enjoyed and, and would see myself drinking like fairly often and, and want to sh share with other people mm -hmm. um, that are getting into bourbon, I think it's... It's going to stand out anytime you're drinking it blind. You're not going to fool anybody. Correct. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, a, it's a phenomenal bourbon, and everybody should give it a shot, I think. Um, just It's worth trying. So 8.4. Wow. Okay. Very that's cool. Sure. Ryan, what do you say? As, as Nick Cage would say, Stephen, that's high praise. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, real good. I mean, that chocolate fudge I get, that, that sourdough, I get some apple and cinnamon. Not caramel as much. For <laughs> four customers, I'll hit this bottle over your head. Oh, you know, and then I slap you. I swear to God, if you would have said you were picking up caramel, I was going to say you you were full of shit, right? Like, <laughs> like, yeah. No, I didn't really get. It. Which I mean, sometimes you get bourbon; it's a little caramely and apple. It's a caramel apple type taste, but yeah. I didn't really get that at all. No, the the nose off the front, I was kind of like 
standoffish towards it because I smelled some whiskeys before, not that are similar, t- but when it's so different, usually it's not very good. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> what I've, you know, it might be from, you know, a company that just started, you know, getting their boots off the ground and hopefully their stuff gets better. But this, I mean, I like it a lot. Seven and a half. I was going to score it. Seven, five. Yeah. 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 So, um, I- I'm telling you right now, if, if, if I would have rated this the first time I tasted it, I'm not shitting you. It would have been a three, four. It would have been a three, four all day long. I couldn't stand it. I'm glad that I cleared my head and gave it another try. And as you can see, I have done some damage to the bottle, right? And um, now it's taken some time because it's not something I drink on a regular basis. I will say when I'm in the mood for Spirits of French, like the weeder, I put a pretty solid hurting on it in that sitting. And then I just leave it alone until the next time I'm in the mood for Spirits of French, like the weeder. Um, but I'm going to go pretty much like right in the middle of you. I'm going to go seven, nine. Um, I think it's a really, really good bourbon. I think it's, it's interesting. It's unique. Um, it doesn't taste like anything I've tasted before, right? Like you drink it more, the more you like it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, it's not an everyday pour. It's certainly not an everyday pour in any way, but when you're in the mood for it, it is fucking good. And um, I was in the mood for it tonight, and I'm glad. Man, this is another one. I'm glad that I introduced it to you guys, and you guys enjoyed it. It's uh, that's a that's a good feeling. So, so and yeah. The only set, reason uh, you know I gave it such high praise. The only reason I didn't give it higher was because I would like to see maybe a longer finish, higher proof, just to bring yeah. out some more of those flavors. Ultimately, yeah. it just kind of it it did go away a little quick. So. Yeah. That's that's why I limited a little bit more, even though this this is right up there with one of my favorites so far. Yeah, really good stuff. And, yeah, Spirits of French yeah. Lake definitely one to watch out for. And yeah. uh, Ryan Hope to see in Chicago. <laughs> Ryan is a Polish man, so <laughs> he is Polish. <laughs> <laughs> I can't like really tell what the bo- all the bottles are. Is that a Woodford one up top left? Uh, old Fitzgerald. Oh, it's Old Fitzgerald. Yeah, Old Fitzgerald, and then Pappy, and then Bombergers, and Pappy Lot B. This is a five dollar bottle of Cabernet right there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're you're blocking the birthday bourbon. (laughs) (laughs) This is a uh, like a ceramic or like a pumpkin-y thing back here. (laughs) 